Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the applications of the bioinformatics tools or the algorithms to structure prediction and folding rates and folding stability and so on. So, in this class, I will mainly focus on predicting the 3D structures of proteins from amino acid sequence right, using the bioinformatics tools. In the previous class, we discussed about various parameters or the properties which can be derived from protein three dimensional structures. Right. What are the various parameters we discussed in the cl earlier classes? Yeah. Contact yeah. maps, contact map, solvent, so solvent accessibility, buriedness, buried, uh, solvent accessible reduction ratio, transfer, transfer free energy. energy and based on the contacts you can see the contact order, long range order, multiple contact index. Then other parameters like as hydrophobicity and the interaction between the two different residues, what are the potential interactions right between two different residues based on the type of residues like the heterophobic interactions or cat and pi interactions or electrostatic interactions and so on. And later on we discussed about applications of the contact maps to superimpose protein structures. If the two different structures you can see how far they are similar in 3D structures right? we discussed about the superimposition of protein structures based on contact maps. So, when we look into the availability of 3D structures in protein data bank, at the moment we have around 133,000 structures in protein data bank. On the other hand, the available information regarding protein sequences in which database? Uniflow database, right. So, we look at it is currently about 89 million sequences, right. So, if you compare the availability of amino acid sequences and structures, right, available sequences are about uh, 700 fold than the availability of the structures and the protein structures will be helpful on understanding the function, identifying the active sites and the antigenic sites right or the different uh, uh, binding sites with other complexes and so on. So, it is very important to have the structures of proteins right than sequence information. Now, due to the availability of more number of sequences and less number of structures, it is important to predict the structures of proteins from just amino acid sequence information. So, we look into this structure determination. So, what are the various methods used to determine 3D structures of proteins? HC crystallography, NMR spectroscopy, right. Even with the latest information as well as the refined instruments, right, and well sophisticated apparatus. So, you can see the structures available structures are only 133,000. And to determine the structures of a single protein, right, it may take about 10,000, 15,000 dollars and at least 2 months to 1 year if the structures are simple. When you go with the complex structures like protein DNA complexes or protein protein complexes, right, in this case you will get more time for example, 3 to 4 years, right, to understand the structure and function, right, as well as the expense is also very high. So, comparing the time to determine the structures of the proteins and the complexes right as well as the uh, cost of getting the structures. It is very important to predict the 3D structures of proteins from sequence. So, deciphering the native confirmation of the protein from the amino acid sequence right this is called the protein folding problem. In 1963 Anfinson stated that the amino acid sequence contains the information regarding the structures and in this case it may be possible to get the 3D structures from just the amino acid sequence. So, what is the protein folding problem? It is getting the 3D structures of a protein right from just its amino acid sequence. How to get that? If we took the 3D structures, first you can see this elongated chain, then it will uh, distorted here and there. After that, you can see the probable bends, right, and finally, it will get the regular shape right and kind of 3D structures right. This is the animation you can see that how from the unfolded state of a protein finally folds into the stable 3 dimensional structure. 
So, how to obtain this structure from the amino acid sequence? There are various methods to predict the 3D structures just from this amino acid sequence. One of the most popular methods right that is called homology modeling. It is based on the principle that if two sequences share high sequence identity or sequence similarity, then the assumption is that the structures are also similar based on that principle. So, they developed the methodology called the homology modeling or comparative modeling. If there are no significant homologies available, then the another method is whether you can recognize the folds whether they can make any specific folds and if that also fails then you can try from the beginning that is called ab initio method right you can start from the scratch starting from the single uh, atom and build the second atom based on the bond length and the third atom based on the bond length and uh, bond angle right and the fourth one with the bond length bond angle torsion angles right you can build up a method that is called ab initio method. For example, this atom number 1 you can fix the second atom right this one is 2 right just with this bond length. If you know this atom is C and this is also C you can you know the bond length of C and C C. So, you can fix this second uh, position of the second atom. Then for the third one for example, if we do here. So, what determines the position of this third atom? Angle. One is this uh, this uh, length and second is the angle right this theta and length. So, this will determine the location of this third atom. So, we have the fourth one right. So, here we require three parameters one is the length and here we need the angle and then we need torsion angle right takes different confirmations. Then we go with the fifth one you have three information you can three uh, measures like length angle and uh, torsion angle with respect to these two three four we can fix the fifth atom likewise we can grow and finally, make the energy minimization to get the final stable structures. I will discuss about this details in later. Then recently there are several methods called hybrid method right this combines different techniques wherever we have the significant similarity or the homology. So, we can take the structures using homology modeling and if the structures are not available or the sequence identity is less then we do the ab initio modeling and finally, we combine everything together and make a single structure using energy minimization. So, this model also works uh, fine right recently this hybrid models. The ability of these techniques can be assessed using a competition called the critical assessment of protein structure prediction of proteins is called CASP. This is conducted once in two years right we can uh, enter into the competition and we can also try to build our models and see how far our method can be accurate right compared with the other methods in the literature. So, let us start with the model the prediction technique. So, if you have the protein sequence I will get the experimental data you can get the protein sequence. So, we want to predict the structure first see the database searching right available database you can search which database you need to search PDB. you can say pdb you can use blast use the database the pdb database with known structures right. So, if you have the significant homology significant identity with any of the structures you can make the multiple sequence alignment right and see the conserved region, regions and if you find significantly homologous structures in the PDB yes then you can go with the homology modeling. So, which type of identity is good to hold the homology modeling that I will explain very soon. So, if you have find significant homology then you can go with the comparative modeling or homology modeling fine. If there is no homologous in the PDB right it is no then we go with the next step you can try to do with the second second prediction. If you have the secondary structures then based on the second structures you can try to predict the fold which type of fold it can make right. If we can predict any specific fold then we can align with these structures and then based on that information you can go with this homology modeling other particular alignment with that the particular positions. Even that fails then we go with the initial modeling we start from the scratch and then try to get the 3D structures. The performance and the accuracy depends on various factors for example, if you have highly homologous structures then you will get you can try to achieve the highest accuracy right close to the experimental values less homologous you can do the initial uh, technique that also you can uh, predict with reasonably uh, good accuracy. So, well, let us discuss about the homology modeling what is the principle used in homology modeling? Similarity. 
right? right? In the predicted three D structure of your protein, right? From the sequence, with an accuracy which is comparable to the experimental data, if the identity between these proteins are too high. For example, here I give two uh, different proteins. Here the uh, identity is 84 percent with 92 percent uh, similarities. And if you get highly homologous sequences, you can get a model which is similar to the template what you choose. So, you can assume that the two sequences they share very common residues have high sequence identity or sequence similarity then these two proteins have similar structures. So, if you see these structures they can show in the two different colors one is in blue and one is in gray. So, they are also aligned well in the sequence and can see the similar structures with the less RMSD that is about one angstrom. So, this is a principle used in homology modeling. There are also instances in which the sequence identity may be less, but you can they can have similar structures. For example, the timbaral fold these proteins they share very less sequence identity like less than 30 percent, but they have similar structures right with the high uh, similar structures you can get in the case of temporal folds. So, how this protein homology modeling works and why we need to model the protein using homology modeling because if you want to do structure based drug design or to understand the important functionally important information for your protein. It is good to generate models using in silico protein structure prediction. So, here I, do, I uh, list up some of the important applications one is for any target if the structure is not known to identify the small molecules which can potentially interact with these targets we require the structures. If the structure is not available then it is very important to have a structure right. In this case if you generate a model then this model could be used as a potential target for identifying the lead compounds for any drugs. In the structure based drug design it is required to have a model and also to find the protein functions which residues are important for the several protein functions right you require the structures. Then also you can see the antigenic behavior and the rational design of proteins with increased stability or functions and so on. For all these aspects modeling is the only way in which we get this structure information right in if the if the experimental techniques fail to get the structures right. To use a x-ray crystallography which inform which is required for x-ray crystallography crystal. crystal right if your protein is not able to crystallize then you cannot use x-ray crystallography for determine the structures right and if you have big proteins right sometimes you cannot use NMR spectroscopy. If the experimental techniques fail then the only option is modeling in this case we have to use the modeling techniques for predicting the structure. For example, membrane proteins it is very difficult to crystallize right. In this case you can use this modeling techniques to get this uh, 3D structures. So, how we get the conclusion that you can get the structure from the sequence because if you have the sequence the residues are accommodated in different specific range right also you can see the specific combination of the seminous residues. Then we discussed about the different parameters, structural parameters, right? You can see even they are a specific combination. Some residues which are far away in the sequence, they are also close in space. Essentially, if you see that the sequence contains the information regarding the structure. For example, there are several hydrophobic residues. These hydrophobic residues tend to form the score in the 3D structures. And if you have one positive charge residue and negative charge residues, which are very close in the sequence, they have the tendency to form the ion pairs right or solvids right. So, you can see that the sequence contains the information regarding structure and it is possible right to predict the structure from its amino acid sequence. So, now the question is if two proteins have different sequence identity for example, 80 percent or 60 percent or 50 percent how accurate you can obtain the model. Here I can see that if it is more than 60 percent in this case you can get a model which is similar to the medium resolution NMR structures and you can also the low resolution crystallography structures you can get up to that level right that is very high accurate you can get the accuracy similar to the low resolution structures. And if you get these structures you can get the atomic coordinates 
and this can be used for docking of small ligands or you can see the interactions because you will get high quality structures. And if the sequence identity is less for example, 30 to 60 percent in this case you can get the accuracy similar to the molecular replacement in crystallography. How the molecular replacement in crystallography works because there is spatial homology if there are similar uh, electron density maps they can see that they may have similar structures like that level you can get the structures if the sequence identity is about 30 to 60 percent. So, if you want to do site mutagen studies these models you can use if the sequence identity is less you can get a model it is very crude model in this case it is not good for the very high resolution like high, high resolution structures and we cannot get all the interactions, but we can try to use it for assigning the fold or you can see the contact between residues if, if you consider C alpha atoms right because the models are very crude models we do not get the well defined structures but you can use it to understand what could be the probable fold or which residues are possible to interact with each other and so on. Right. Now, the question is what is the sequence identity we require for homology modeling right where you care 30 percent or 50 percent and 60 percent and so on right. What is the average percent accuracy uh, the identity required for homology modeling right that you can see the number of aligned residues right if we have 150 residues which are aligned and if the identity is more than 50 percent like we like see here this you can say as a safe zone. If it is less number of aligned residues even the sequence identity is very high and the aligned residues are high. So, because we will get same sequence different structures. So, in this case the homology modeling would not work because we will adopt different types of structures. So, if you have the 100 residues then you need at least 60 percent sequence identity depending upon the number of aligned residues and the sequence identity right we, we, we can select the cutoff identity for homology modeling. Here I mentioned that 150 residues with 50 percent is a safe zone in this case you can use for homology modeling and you will get reliably good structures right using the structure prediction algorithms. So, when you make the homology modeling right what are the various steps one has to consider for homology modeling right. The first one is we need to identify a template your query sequence right you have to identify template because your model you build based on the template. So, it is very important to identify a proper template right. So, because your structure finally, depends on the selection of templates. So, it is very important to take the proper template right and then you need to do the alignment. How to make the alignment? Structure. Right, you can do the initial sequence alignment using the blast right and if you look into the alignments. So, you check any specific residues which are conserved or any residues which are having important functions these residues should be properly aligned right. If these residues are not properly aligned finally, you end up with the structure right which is different from what you require. So, you need to do the al proper alignment and check the alignment whether the important residues right with the experimental information are properly aligned or not. Once you do that you can make the corrections and finally, make sure that your alignment is correct right with respect to the experimental information available for the particular protein. How to get the experimental information for a specific proteins either you use the literature or you can also get from the Unipro database and so on. Once you get the alignment correction then you go with the backbone generation because we get the template your template is ready then for your target you can just copy the, the backbone because the backbone is the same right the target and the template and use this as your to build the model. Then if you see there are proper proper alignment of residues the residues are the same then you can copy the side chains right and other cases you can replace these amino acid residues. Then you do the loop modeling right for there are several loops then you have to get the modeling the loops right and then you do the side chain modeling the side chains can take several confirmations that you can use uh, the available confirmations to model the side chain and once the model is built then you need to optimize whether you check the model is energetically favorable right you can uh, optimize the model. So, finally, if you are happy with the model then you validate whether this uh, model is valid based on the energy or the bond length bond angle torsion angle and so on. 